The Book of Recollections, Episode 15, Lock and Key, by Dysylvania. Let me tell you a story about a woman and a man. It, it's not what you think. There's also a cat involved. Oh, stop it. Never mind. I tried to be intriguing, but you got the wrong idea. Let's just get on with the story. I'm your book of recollections, yada yada, you spoiled my storytelling mood. Happy now? In their cell, Keith and Adam began to ponder how they'd found themselves in that predicament, hoping that, in doing so, they might be able to find a way to escape. Only a week before, on the night of Jovis, they were infiltrating the royal domain within the Green Palace via a secret passageway that Pax had told them about. The passage was also linked to Lady Cora's pleasure dungeon. They had embarked on that quest in order to find concrete evidence that the Regent Queen had been conspiring with the Hebdomads. Although some semblance of guards were present within the Green Palace, the late hour made most of them rather dull, allowing the two spies to sneak by without much hassle towards a heavy ebony door adorned with emerald gems. The door as per Pax's instructions, should have led them to the Queen's wing. Wanting to make sure that the door wasn't actually a magical trap, Adam took some time to make the ritual of magical detection during which a cat snuck up on them. As Adam finished the incantation, the door handle glowed with illusory and transmutation runes, which he deducted would transform the person that interacted with it. Looking back at Kaith to tell her his discoveries, Adam realized that the cat also glowed with the same transmutation aura. The feline saw the frown on Adam's face and ran away, causing the man to conjure a magical hand, but in an instant the trajectory of the conjuration shifted towards the door handle. Because the countermeasures worked only against organic materials, the door opened without triggering the magical trap. The cat then returned and dashed inside before the two closed the door shut. Kate, Adam and the cat found themselves in a hallway that had various rooms on either side of it, but due to the magical detection still being in effect, nothing caught the man's attention. Knowing that time was of the essence, Keith began to lockpick one of the doors which led to a dressing room filled with dresses and, strangely enough, red wigs. This made Adam ponder whether or not the Regent Queen, who allegedly was a distant cousin of Lena Blunder, actually had red hair, or was it a show of power and authority to earn the respect of the people? The cat wanted to draw Kate's attention by rubbing against her ankle, which caused it, for just a moment, to shift its coloration from light ginger to bright red. The cat wanted Kate to open another door, but, seeing how the two were confused, it sighed and, with a puff, Blaze appeared in front of them. He told them that he was there for the same reason as them. Seeing that he was rather flustered, Kate took him by the hand, which caused him to blush and blaze up for a moment. After agreeing to a bit of friendly competition, Blaze directed them to a door that would, most probably, lead them to the study. Adam explained that, if they were to find any clues regarding the order of the Habdomads, they should hand them to him. But Kate however, was too busy to subtly hit on Blaze, who wasn't sure if he was joking or not. Our three burglars made their way to the study, where they found an oaken desk housing all sorts of parchments, quills and a red globe emanating a faint magical aura. As they were investigating the room, Jovis appeared next to Keith and as was the case with their other siblings, tried to sway the half-elf on their side. Although the events beneath the Tomb of Time made her impervious to Jovis' silver tongue, the Astral offered a blessing to Adam and Kate, increasing their capabilities before leaving them be. 
The Red Globe caught the attention of Blaze, who deemed himself fair quicker than Keith, and, although he could have left with it, offered it to Keith, proving that there was honor among thieves. The final door they investigated led to a bedroom with the statue of Martis, slightly tilted on one side. On the bed, there was a faint outline of a person. The figure snored. Approaching the effigy, Adam knew that if they tried to move it, the noise would wake up the person. He then decided to use the spell Castiel taught him, which reduced the size of the statue, revealing a circular indentation in the floor, which fit the red globe like a glove. An invisible mechanism was triggered, opening the way to a set of stairs that led towards an underground chamber. The secret chamber revealed 20 neck-high pillars, acting as display cases for the magical scrolls that floated above them. The thieves decided to take 10 each, and both Blaze and Adam began to dispel the magical runes that kept the scroll safeguarded within the glass. Blaze managed to steal five, whilst Adam only managed one due to a sudden and mysterious earthquake that broke one of the glasses. The perturbation quickly drew the attention of the guards. Blaze shifted back into a cat and was quick to make himself scarce, whilst Adam and Keith were caught by Mikhail Bonapetit. Under the Queen Regent's order, they were taken to a prison that was far away from Greenspring. Their reminiscence was interrupted by Leo's message and Adam's subsequent reply. Once arriving at what they would soon discover to be Gogmagog prison, their blindfolds were taken off and they were thrown into one of the damp and dark cells that had no windows being carved deep within the mountain. But there was also another prisoner there, dressed in dirty beige clothes with dark skin and white hair slanted eyes and fuzzy features that slightly glowed. She made herself known to the group as Isari, a diurnal from the Temple of Heichi in the Red Kingdom. She was a missionary, but she was caught and sent to Gogmagog. To Isari's surprise, an immediate bond was created between her and the two prisoners, which was dwarfed by the sudden appearance of Solis, who offered Kaith unbeknownst knowledge in exchange for her faith. Kate refused his offer, using the excuse that before making her mind up she wanted to hear Luna's offer as well, who was the last astral that would visit her. As Solis vanished, the group began to discuss further and Isari disclosed that she had to deliver a message to a diplomat named Pax, which would benefit both kingdoms. It was hard for Adam and Keith to put it into words, but there was something about her, an energy that made them trust her. Three young guards approached their cell and began to bargain with them in exchange for Adam's necklace. They sparked a bidding war between the two parties, with many offers and counter-offers, ending with the group being reallocated to another, more pleasant cell with a window. As the three were taken to their location, from their vantage point overlooking the courtyard, their attention was drawn towards a burly figure running and screaming the name, Hebdom. This was the recap for episode 15 of Vim, as told by the Book of Recollections. I am Count Bear, your Vim recap narrator. If you'd like to join us as Vim The Tale of Immortality premieres, tune in on Sunday at 5 p.m. UTC on youtube.com slash at Dysylvania. New recaps drop every Friday evening. And remember, every subscribe keeps the magic alive. Thanks for sticking with us. Good day, good night, and don't let the vampires bite.